So um, first of all, I'm going to tell you about um, the curriculum for uh, our life science um, students. So in first year, they have to do, if they're going to continue in life sciences, have to do Biology 1A and Biology 1B courses. They also have to do either Chemistry or Science Fundamentals. And those courses take up 80 of their 120 credits in their first year. So they have to choose a third subject. Um, for some students, that will be psychology, it will be geography, and so on. Um, Biology 1A is a co-requisite for this Current Directions course. We found we had a cohort of students who were unsure and uh, found it difficult to timetable a suitable course in the first semester that would support their uh, studies in life sciences. So there was a gap there. And they were choosing weird and wonderful combinations of courses. And that's fine. They're allowed to choose weird and wonderful combinations of courses, but not when a timetabling issue is pushing them into those courses. So um, we applied for bold funding and we came up with this current directions in life sciences. So as I said, it's 20 credits, it's first semester, and oh, how glad I am that we use the grid view for Moodle Science. <laughs> <laughs> we also use nice icons and um, we have very similar structure to what has just been shown. Um, the motivations we asked our students, what were the motivations for choosing this course and as um, we expected, some said that they wanted something that related to the degree and other ones were intrigued by the online aspect that they could be a bit more flexible um, with how they, how they work. Okay, as part of this, we were asked to how we as teaching professionals have transitioned into online learning. Uh, and the first thing, I, I created this slide, and it's a kind of timeline. And the first thing I want to indicate is 2008 is when Chris and I started with Biology 1A and 1B. They're the campus-based courses that we are coordinators for. So these courses run before that. But uh, in development of the current directions in life sciences, we asked those courses, what about an online, oh, not the course, the courses, we asked the students, what about an online course? And they said, Biology 1B is kind of online anyway. I said, no, it's not, it's a campus-based course. Because we have so many resources on, online um, and support resources for our students, the kind of lines are blurred between um, an online and a campus-based course for those, for those students. So in green, you have uh, our experience on online, of online learning as students. So um, before 2008, before the Biology 1A, it was basically we did lots of um, online courses to develop the campus-based course and develop those resources for it. The Opens course in 2014, we developed, that was our first fully online course that we developed. And that's a pre-entry online course for nursing students. I won't say any more. Uh, about that and then we have then since put a widening participation the biology um, component of the widening participation summer school online and then we have developed the current directions in, in life sciences and Chris did say what's all this why you got green all the way along and that's because um, we have both uh, still interacted with online learning we have both completed MOOCs I am a completer I don't start a MOOC unless I'm going to finish it so as you see I did a lot of work um, um, before um, we or as we were developing current directions in life sciences okay so a, a very brief overview of the course um, th this is what students see, they will see side blocks as well, which has a course forum and a notice board. This structure is very similar to the middle structure our students see, will see for Biology 1A and 1B, uh, and that's something that they're familiar, familiar with, and that structure is based on student feedback, so we put that together. So course orientation, students enrol in the course, that's the only block they see. <laughs> course orientation, they go in and they do those activities uh, within there. They see course orientation, they complete a glossary post about themselves and upload an image, then that would display on the side. So uh, as soon as they start, they will see uh, at this appearing their, their creation of anything on the front page of the Moodle site. Um, I'm going to pass over to you and you can... Oh, well, I'll say what the students have said. Some, I, some students said they had no idea what to expect from an online course. Some said, as we've predicted, they're just going to fill up those 20 credits. Um, however, it ended up being more than that, which was nice for us to hear. One student had low expectations, which again, 
we can only go up from that. Um, however, um, the content would be general. They thought the content would be general, but discovered it was more in-depth and they, they really found that um, enjoyable. Just to give you an idea of the orientation week or block, sorry, within the Moodle site, um, this was a pre-entry element to the site. So as soon as students registered and enrolled, they got access to this. We were hoping to trigger, spark their interest in the course and get them in practicing activities, practicing and, and actually putting up content of their own onto the Moodle site to try and get them engaged with the course at the very start. So you'll see orientation tasks. They were sort of practice elements to what they're going to come across through the, the rest of the semester. A guide to studying online to, again, try and reinforce that this is a different way of learning. There's a different way of engaging with the course and using the facilities. The getting to know you, I'll show you an example in a moment where they can put something up fun about themselves. And then each time they log in randomly, somebody's getting to know you post appears in the front screen. So hopefully as a way of engaging contact with the other students within the, the course as well. This is too small X's to reflect a huge amount of our stress and student stress. Moodle collapsed at the start of the course. That didn't help us. These are first year students. This is their first interaction uh, with the VLE. Big blue button didn't work for us, didn't do what we wanted it to do. Moodle, we couldn't do anything about personally. We can start to flag up IT requests and saying, we're in trouble. Big blue button, we quickly moved to Skype for Business and with staff support that I'll thank in a moment, this worked much, much better and ended up allowing us to do more within it. And actually, the, the webinars that we started to run through this became a real joy within the course. We had a lot of fun with this as we went through. Um, just to show you what a getting to know you post is, Zara was the postgraduate support that we were able to pay for through the bold funding. Um, so this was her post and sticking up a fun image, but we asked the students to do more and, and ask about their degree and what were they aiming for within the degree and start to get personal information that they could start to interact with within. The one thing I said at the start is this is a pre-entry activity because it's happening before they get in. That raised an issue that we hadn't really anticipated about the ad drop period. We had our blocks organised in a time release fashion which meant if someone was coming in at the end of week two, which was the latest that they could enrol onto the course, they'd missed this, they'd missed the introductory week, and they were already one week in to the dementia block, which was the first block that they were in. So for, and not the majority, granted, but for those number of students who were picking their courses later and through the ad drop period, that created an issue that we're still discussing, and we're still trying to figure out um, a way forward for. Um, one of the questions we were asked to address was how did you support the learners transition so we as well as the orientation we had some what was it media production production values we had the media unit guys helping us out with auto cues and making Mary and I look the same height and <laughs> lots of these videos about introducing the blocks that were about selling the topic and explaining why we picked it, why we focused on something where there's current research calls within that scientific research area. So we were trying to showcase that this is, we didn't just pick four random topics. There was a reason and a rationale behind why we were doing it. How to study online, again, trying to highlight some of the, the, the differences between normal campus-based learning, and you'll see some of the resources that we built up. This one was focused on vaccines to try and get them into the life science area. They weren't going to come across vaccines in the other four blocks that were assessed, so this is all about practice, all about familiarity within it. We had a glossary, the students were posting, so here's an example. So this one, they were asked to put up um, terminology, definitions of terminologies that would become a, a useful resource as they work through, and how it relates to their own subject area. We had webinars that I said a moment ago were fantastic. Um, the assessment was clarified. We, we've a lot, thousands of experience of thousands of students coming through Biology 1A and 1B who are telling us very quickly in first year, we want to know what the assessments are, tell us now. And we've used those students to help us design what we feel is clear, what we feel is explainable, and then we interact if there's any confusion. So we, did ex we applied that practice to this course as well. So the students were more familiar with Moodle, certainly they had to engage with Moodle quicker, and that fed on to their other Moodle sites. And we've got good student feedback on what was good, what was bad, whether there was confusion. Sometimes there was confusion about nomenclature and where we were putting things, and sometimes the information on one page, it was duplicated, and on another page was slightly different or slightly worded differently. So all good stuff for us then moving forward onto the next. And I'm going to finish just with the thank yous, um, just to clarify uh, <laughs> the same as everybody else said. Vicky has been a continuous point of support and contact throughout this. The bold funding has brought this about, but the interim reports were actually a useful process within that as well to give us an idea where we were at and where we were still aiming towards. The digital education unit within our college was supportive. 
Um, Nigel and Andy's gone somewhere, but uh, they were helping us make sure that the production values were something that we could use um, as a selling point for the course and a way to address the course. Um, IT services helped us particularly with the Skype for Business, so Stephen and Diane quickly came on to help us move from Bigly Button to Skype for Business. They actually came up and sat with us while we ran some of the sessions and helped us make sure that the students were able to get on and that we were able to use it. And as I said, the bowl funding allowed us to pay for Zara's uh, time and support within the course and she needs a huge thank you uh, within that. Okay. okay, so we were also asked um, what we would consider for future development uh, of uh, current directions and one aspect that, um, of our own experience of, of online learning and our students experience is group work and uh, how difficult it is to achieve and I don't think we've managed to do it um, effectively yet so if there's anyone in the room that has um, uh, fantastic ways of doing that and gets students to interact and work well together online then please talk to me later. Um, we are going to introduce uh, peer marking which is something we do in the Biology 1A course, so that each student's individual grade for the uh, group work is, is based on, uh, is based on <laughs> a staff mark for the output and also based on what the other students in their group give them, so how they, uh, they're assessed, because they are the ones who know how much each individual student have put in to that, um, that exercise. Group size, our students have said there wasn't enough for everybody to do. Our groups were eight, and eight and nine students, eight or nine students, and they said that was too large, so we're going to reduce the group size. They wanted the introductory week content, because I just told you that it's, it was separate from the rest of the course. They really liked the, the, um, the, the topics of the blocks. They found them really interesting. They didn't want to know uh, uh, about the introductory week content. They wanted more information about those blocks. So we're going to change that. They wanted the order of the content changed a bit slightly. So we're going to do that. Um, and we're going to build on the content delivered by external experts. Initially, we, we wanted an external expert for every block. And then we would build support resources around that. And we haven't been able to achieve that in every block. So we, we're continuing to, to, to build uh, our network and get people to do that. And I say possibly students. I, um, I don't know if any of you know about the iGEM um, competition that um, our life science students have, um, have taken part in in several years. I spoke to some of those students and the enthusiasm I wish I could bottle. So I've said, can you, uh, I've, I've, I've included it in the course already, but me talking about it is nowhere as good as having those students talk about it. So they've agreed that they're going to create. So these are final year students and they're going to agree to create some content for this course. The glossary of terms was something that was introduced within the course. We, we had a staff student liaison committee with the students halfway through the course, this course, so that we could implement anything or any suggestions that they had, um, rather than just have any changes for the subsequent year. Glossary of terms was something I put on there and I said, use it if you wish. There was no uh, assessment value to it and they did. They said, please keep that up for the rest of the course. We love it. And it's something they used and they just, it just seemed to fly. Frequently asked questions. The Skype for Business, when you have anything you type in the chat window, it appears in your conversations in Outlook. And very quickly, we, you can strip the student IDs off of that and use any questions and answers to form a frequently asked question glossary. So we have that resource. We made it available to the students this year and we have that resource for subsequent years as well. It's very quick and easy to do. And we also did the same for the course forum, any questions and answers on there. There is an ongoing um, evaluation and I think each year we will just uh, continue to build on this course. Okay, recommendations and questions. Um, the add drop period that Chris mentioned, um, we have to consider that in this course. So that's why there's an introductory week content that was slightly different. It, it was there because we were aware that students might be coming in in week two. First assessment is week three. We did have some students who couldn't uh, come to Glasgow because of uh, visa arrangements and they didn't arrive until week three. They had missed 20% of the assessment for this course. Um, so the timing and number of assessments is something we agonised over. Um, engagement versus overwhelming. Students didn't complain with the, the level that we have, so we think we maybe have hit it correctly. We don't have any plans to change the, time, uh, the amount of assessments the student interaction, for those of you who uh, maybe haven't or considering working online, it's different. We make a, a, an effort to be approachable um, for Biology 1A1B. Online, you have to make that an extra effort again, because sometimes when you write something down, it doesn't come across just as friendly as you were hoping it would. 
Um, easily and frequently monitor student engagement. Active learning platform is something that's linked to our Echo360 system. And it's something that we got access to halfway through this course. And it allowed me to take my PowerPoint slides, add some interactivity, so some uh, multiple choice questions and so on, and then put that in my recordings. So that I can go into the uh, active learning platform system and I can see students who have, how long they've watched the videos for, how many questions they've answered and who got those questions right. What that does, and I didn't know this at the time, it gives the students an attendance score. Now, I knew I could see the attendance score, but I didn't know the students could see the attendance score. So that, that um, perked some interest amongst our students in that we've been scored on attendance. So um, they were very aware. So that's something I want to, to use more um, in the subsequent years. Um, my advice, always have a plan B. We didn't know Moodle was going to collapse. We didn't know Big, Big Blue Button was going to collapse. We had to very quickly um, adapt to that. I think we were, we were um, it was good for us that it happened in week one, that our <laughs> students were very forgiving. They were a bit bewildered anyway, so we as well be bewildered and, and not have access to the course. Um, how to timetable. Those webinars, we make them compulsory, but what's compulsory is either attend the webinar and, and participate or watch the recording. We would like to make them compulsory, but I don't know a way of doing that to make Timetable an online event compulsory along with the timetabling system which is linked to room bookings. If anyone knows how to do that, then please tell me. Um, and personally, how to recognise staff contribution and the current workload model. I would like guidance from that from the institution on, on how uh, the work that goes into this is recognised. If there's no work. No yeah, I've got no more, don't you? <laughs> Didn't feel like it at all. Um, so from our evaluation, uh, Skype for Business is something for us um, as, as, as teachers. We uh, really enjoyed and got value from um, and students as well said they saved their questions from Skype, for Skype for Business sessions because they knew that other students would benefit from, their, from hearing the answers too. They, they uh, liked the depth of detail within the course, uh, insights into world of research and industry, and the relevance of the topics, and that the fact that they had to do some research, that they, uh, they were given guidance, but they were able to do their own research on this. Notification of deadlines, they're all over the Moodle site. They still don't think they get them. Um, we will um, keep, continue to remind them. Less breadth and more depth in biotechnology, so that's something we'll implement. Um, and model answer with correct referencing is um, something specific that students have asked for. Okay, so that is just um, a slide with some, some of our um, dissemination, some of our presentations that we've done previously on our transitions to uh, online course. Thank you.